amazing mechanical puppet show. Why use a paintbrush when you can make an airbrush? Feel the force with your own magnetic cleaner. And mix up an emergency batch of protein paste. We'll have that handy recipe for you very soon. But first, Jade is about to have a brainwave. Zach and I are making finger puppets. There, this is one scary pirate. Ah, oh, shiver me timbers. We're putting a puppet show on tomorrow afternoon with our buddy Kate. Hello, Jade speaking. <gasps> it's Kate. She's got chicken pox. What? And even worse, she can't come to our puppet show. Yes, okay. You get well soon, Kate. Bye. How are we going to put out our puppet show now? Without Kate, we don't have enough fingers. Nope, the show must go on. We'll have to build a replacement Kate. Come on, Zach. Do keep up, darling. Now, I need to borrow the shoe box from my big sister. And a hefty pair of pliers. One more thing, a wire cricket. I have a plan. Lara and I are about to paint a masterpiece for the school art show. Hey, the paintbrushes have gone. Oh no, we left them at my house. Don't panic. I have a creative idea. Who needs a paintbrush where well, you can make an airbrush? Cut a piece of drinking straw about three finger widths long and tape it to a piece of stiff card like this. Now roll a piece of paper around a pencil and tape it together to make a tube slightly thicker than the straw. Tape the tube at right angles to the straw. When you blow into the paper tube, the air should flow across the top of the straw. Yep, that's looking good. Now I'll mix up the paint. It needs to be watery so it can flow easily up the straw. Lara looks a bit doubtful about my airbrush, but I think she'll be blown away. There we go. Now check this out. Into the paint and blow really hard through the paper tube. Original at the show. The fast moving air being blown out of the paper tube creates a low pressure area at the top of the straw. Because higher air pressure is pressing down on the liquid in the cup, the paint is drawn up the straw into the low pressure area in the airstream. As soon as it emerges from the straw, it gets blown away to become part of the girl's painting. Clever and creative. We're just adding the finishing touches to our painting. There! It's modern, it's messy, and it's definitely a masterpiece. What a great idea! I've got to have a go of this airbrush. Zach and I are making a mechanical puppet show. First, we'll straighten out this coat hanger. That's it. Now we can make some new bends in it. A right angle here, another one there, and another one here. Finished. What I've done is make some steps in the wire. One goes up like this, then one goes down, and then another one goes up. Now attach some thin wire to the three steps. Twist it round and leave a long end hanging off. Cut a slit into one end of the box. Now we need Mum to make some holes for us. One in the other end of the box. And three along the side. This is where the thin wire will poke through. Keep cutting out the puppet sack. Thanks Mum. There, four holes. One, two, three. 
two, three, and four. Now put the coat hanger in like this. And poke the thin wires out the holes along the sides. Straighten those up and make a turning handle at one end like this. Give that a turn, Zach. The bends in the wire move up and down. And that makes the thin wires move too. Good, it works. Let's put our puppets on. A pirate ship in the middle. A treasure chest on the end. And the Jolly Roger at the other end. That looks so cool. Can't wait for showtime. There's so much ice out there. I wonder where all that frozen water goes when it melts. Could it make the sea level go up? I know how I can find out. I'll take this cup of icy slush straight from the backyard and put it on a paper towel. Then I'll top it up with water so the cup is full. Now the ice is poking up over the rim, so as it melts I think it's going to make the cup overflow. But how can I be sure that the paper has been wet by the melted ice overflowing? I know. I'll add a squirt of green food coloring. Now if it overflows, I'll see the green water on the paper. Now melt away, my mini icebergs. I'm going to wait inside so I don't freeze while you melt. That's not what I expected at all. The ice is all melted, but none of it has overflowed. Not a single drop. How did it all fit in the glass? Because ice takes up more space than water, when it melts, it shrinks. All that ice poking over the top fitted back into the cup. Just as well the water level doesn't get higher. If that huge block of ice melted, I'd be in for a very cold swim. Oh, I don't like the look of all that ice. Well, here's something you'll find more attractive, Dana. It's Fraser's latest invention. Kimberly and I are on a clean-up mission. Dad said he'd give us all the spare coins in his pocket if we tidied his workshop. But these metal filings from Dad's grinder are the worst. They're so hard to clean up. There's got to be an easier way. Metal filings... Got it. We need a little help from these heavy duty magnets. Check these babies out. You start at that end, Kimberly. Wicked. Super powered magno cleaners. This is fun. Whoops. We're stuck together. The metal shavings are holding on to each other. Boy, what a grip. What happens if I turn my magnet around? Now they're pushing each other apart. It's like some kind of superhero force field. Magnets get their superpowers from the alignment of their atoms. In a bar magnet like Fraser's, the atoms all face the same direction. The magnetic field radiates from the ends in a pattern like this. The pull is strongest where the lines are closest together. When the same poles, north and north or south and south, are brought together, the magnetic fields repel each other. Magnetic attraction is so useful. I wonder if we could use it to attract those coins in Dad's pocket. There. That's Mum's birthday present wrapped. I think I'll make her a special card too. No glue. Think, Olivia, think. Got it. One pot of homemade glue coming up. I'll start with a glass of milk. Add two big spoons of vinegar. And stir that in. Now we wait a minute while the vinegar curdles the milk. That ought to do it. See how the liquid in the milk has separated from the creamy proteins. Now to strain the mixture through a cloth. I just want to keep the lumpy white stuff. There. 
I'll put it into a new glass. It's sticky stuff. Now a dash of water and a pinch of bicarbonate of soda. Another quick stir. Listen to that fizzing and popping. My homemade crazy glue is ready to go to work. I'll wipe a little on the back of a strawberry and it sticks perfectly. Milk contains a type of sticky protein called casein. An acid-like vinegar separates the casein from the watery liquid in milk and clumps it together into curd. To turn the lumpy curd back into nice runny liquid, you add baking soda. When the curd no longer has acid in it, it becomes a nice sticky goo of casein protein. A natural glue. There! Mum's prezi looks great! My homemade glue has gotten me out of a sticky situation. Brilliant! A little scientific know-how can always help you solve a problem. It sure can. Let's see how Jade and Zach solve their puppet problem. Zach and I have built this brilliant puppet machine. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that looks perfect. It's all thanks to my engineering skills. The device the clever puppeteers have made is called a crankshaft. Crankshafts transfer mechanical forces from one direction to another. Crankshafts in car engines transfer the up and down movement of the pistons into rotation to turn the wheels. It's showtime! And our puppet machine is working beautifully! Arr, I'm Pink Beard the Pirate! <laughs> Time to walk the plank, you landlubbers! Nice job, Zach! And we didn't need Kate after all! Thank you! Thank you, everyone! Bravo! They deserve a round of applause for that clever contraption. We deserve a round of applause too, Taryn, because we've reached the end of another show. See, See you next time! time.